All right, I'm recording it now. All right, good deal. Uh, we got some guys. Here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get started. We have uh, Coach Ben Mouton, DC at Southside. Uh, this is Coach's ninth year of coaching, I believe, five of which have been a defensive coordinator. Uh, prior to coming to Southside, he was a defensive coordinator at Como High School and began his career at his alma mater, if I'm correct, Coach, at uh, coaching outside linebacker St. Thomas Moore. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, coach and I actually used to talk a lot of 4 2 5 uh, whenever we had the opportunity, and uh, I think he's made the transition to a 3 4. And so, I, I mean, from what I understand, kind of fell in love with it. So we're going to go ahead and let Coach uh, take it away, and he's going to be talking uh, three, four blitz packages and pressures with us today. Go ahead, awesome. Coach. Sweet. Yeah, uh, so like Coach Neal said, I was originally a four two five guy to the core, uh, and then kind of found myself evolving as the game did and moved to more of an odd front type and moved to more of an odd front and – just getting numbers back in our favor. I think, as we all know, the RPO game kind of took over. And once that happened, uh, I felt as the offenses were able to manipulate kind of where we put our overhang and how we structured everything in the fourth quarter. So I felt that it was easier for us to uh, just go to an odd front to keep the numbers in our favor while still being safe and sound with our run fits. So uh, let's see. See if I can do that. Neil, you're going to have to let me share my screen. It's not let you share. Yeah, where it says share screen, Coach, just click allow participants under the settings. <laughs> Whenever I put it on, I just turn on and then it's off. Oh, I'm on the internet. <laughs> All right, I got it now, Neil. Let's see. Okay, sweet. So, yeah, here it is. Uh, obviously, Ben Mouton, cell phone number, Twitter, and email is there. If anybody wants this presentation, feel free. Shoot me a text or email me, and I'll send it to everyone that's on here. Uh, here's our kind of philosophy of our defense. Uh, it's all about, as those of you that know me, no, I don't like to sit still and stay in one thing. I like to bring people from all over. I like to make people uh, think – a lot in the three days they have to prepare for us. Uh, how we break it down is we try and know our opponent better than they know them, you know, within three days. Uh, not every offense is the same. So we have to be able to see what they're telling us on film and be able to attack those tendencies. And we have to be able to line up. On our big boards in our room, 98% uh, of the battle for us is lining up. And I think we think if we can line up properly and – uh, line up properly and communicate well, we have a good chance to be successful. So our principle, uh, we call it swarm, just pursuing to the football, run to the football. We want to out-physical our opponent, be great in our execution of our assignments, limit the explosive runs and passes, uh, explosive runs of 12 or more yards and explosive passes of 16. We want to be confident, play with a chip on our shoulder a little bit, play with uh, a little stuff in our neck, you could say, have a little swagger with us. We want to attack, 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 be fundamentally sound, and make big plays. And throughout the presentation, I think you all see kind of how it all goes hand in hand. Uh, why we went to the 3-4. It allows us to be multiple in a game that is involving week by week. So I can, just looking back at this season, uh, week one, we faced a 10 personnel team that was double strips open. The next two weeks, we played the state champions in Karen Crow and the state champions in Acadiana. And they're both split back veer. And they run the hell out of it, and they're really good with it. Uh, week four, we had twins open, 11 person with an H-back. Week five, we saw double slot option. And week six, we saw wing T. So we were able to get, uh, get lined up to all this stuff. 
and in our base defense, which is what, to me in high school, is like I said, 98% of it. So it allowed us to be multiple in how we prepare for people and multiple in how we line up to people. Uh, it allows us, like I said, a very tough three-day prep. You'll see kind of how we structure everything and can get in and out of different stuff with just one word, which allows our kids to play fast and keep it simple. And that's one thing I think our staff does a really good job of, is that uh, they're really good teachers as well. So it's easy for them to simplify stuff and relay it to our kids that they can under understand it and execute it at a really high level. So our pressure goals are not based on sacks only. Uh, we kind of chart how many times a quarterback gets off his spot on the ground, falling back as he throws. I'm a big fan of middle pressure. Now you'll see that in the clips here shortly. Uh, I think pressure in the quarterback's face right in him is more chaotic than off the edge. I think if he has to stand down or stare down the barrel of two blitzing linebackers, it's more effective than if people are coming off the edge and you can't really see him. Uh, so here's kind of our approach, how we break it down. We want to have a ton of pressure on the passer to get him off his spot, obviously. We teach our kids, and you'll see our linebackers, to be very reckless and physical when they're blitzing. Uh, we teach them to just come like bat out of hell. If, if you're wrong, be wrong running 100%. And then sacks are great and everything if we're still able to stop the run. I think, you know, back when I was younger, it was more of how many blitzes can we draw up? How much stuff can we run for certain down and distance? While we were doing that, though, we were still short in the run game. We're still not able to stop the run. So I think sacks are a complement of stopping the run. If you can stop the run, I think you'll have success doing anything else. Uh, for us, what's more important than everything Number one, stopping the run. I think that's consistent with everyone probably on here. We want to have constant pressure on the quarterback. We don't want him to ever feel comfortable back there. We want him to always feel like something's coming when maybe it is, maybe it is not. We want to force in completions, bat down passes, force him to run if he doesn't want to run. And in general, just making him jittery where he may have to pump fake or pull the ball down and look somewhere he doesn't want to look to where the timing of the offense and the effectiveness of the timing is all messed up or destroyed. So here's some of our terms. And this is what I think we do a really good job of, is we went to kind of a naming system to where everyone on our defense has a name. So when we're facing up-tempo teams, when we're facing, you know, teams that don't huddle that we see now, it's easy for us to call a pressure. It's easier for us to call a blitz with just saying one word. So for us here, and you'll hear me say some of this stuff, uh, Lion is the outside linebacker on the left. Ram is on the right. Smack is the high safety on the left, and Freak is the high safety on the right. Mike and Will, same as everybody else. Uh, strong and weak. And then some of the fronts we play, and you'll see in the clips, base for us is nose and two four techniques. Uh, those four techniques, we kind of call them heavy fours. They're B-gap responsible. There you got the B-gap. And then we'll switch from that to playing four eyes, which uh, offensive guys know. I think that gives offenses trouble, and I think it allows us to dictate a little bit more protection-wise than anything. Uh, we, play front, we call it set. Or we'll play a four eye to the back and a five tech away, or switch it and vice versa. If we're playing a zone team that runs a lot of quarterback stuff, then we'll put the five tech uh, away from the back, and the, or I'm sorry, the five tech to the back and the four eye away for the quarterback. And then all these uh, name, field boundary, two away, that's how we tag our blitzes. So we could have a blitz where we call, uh, you know, it might be lion two or dog two. And that's another blitz is going to the side of the running back. And then if we tag it with away, it's coming away from the back. Uh, we're able to carry more blitzes and pressures because we're able to present them in a ton of different ways without changing a whole lot for our kids. So we play a ton of different fronts, uh, base, those and two fours, we'll play the four eyes, we'll get into a bear front. And I talked to Coach Neal about this already. Usually when we blitz, it's getting back to a bear front. Uh, we're gonna get bear at some point, and we played probably more bear this year than I ever have in my career. But every time we blitz, we're getting back to a bare front at some, some way, shape, or form. Uh, our jet front is probably the same as everybody else's. We're playing nose and two fives. Our set is the four and the five tech. Then our over and our even front is our way to get back to our four man. 
with just, like I said, one word changes the whole complexion of the defense. Here we go with the structures of everything. Um, our base is nose and two fours. Our stack is a check that we have that we got a lot of mileage out of this year. And uh, you guys will see that on film shortly. Over is how we get back to our four man front stuff. And that just gets back to old school four, two, five. Uh, we're going to have a three, we're going to have a shade or a two eye and a five tech and a six tech if there's a tight end attached. Bear is your typical bear, nose, threes and fives. And buck is kind of the, uh, kind of the fad now in football, I think with the three safeties, three across the top with a kind of a light box. And you'll see, I have a clip of that too, where it looks like a light box, but at the snap, it turns into a six, seven man box pretty quick. Here. So anything we do with two or away, like I said, two goes to the back, or if there's an H back in the game, it becomes to the H. Uh, away is away from the running back or away from the H back. Wide, we're sitting it from the field. Tight, coming from the boundary. Strong and weak for us is based off the pass. Oh, my bad. Me, where you at? Names or the position names. So if we go Ram and Lion, that just means that guy's yeah. gone. If we go uh, freaking smack, it's that safety. If we go Mike or Will, it's those guys going. And obviously the specific blitzes are coming from those guys. But here's just a picture of kind of how everything looks. Uh, I drew everything up to doubles. I thought that was the easiest. Uh, first, we have base for us. Like I said, nose and two fours with the overhangs aligned outside. Uh, underneath that is our four eye stuff. We're playing nose and four eyes. And then the L's, the uh, lion, the right's the ram. So that's kind of how we, how we look, structured to doubles. With our base, nose, two fours, our eyes techniques, nose and four eyes. So here's our over front up top. So we have a three tech and a two eye. And all it, all it tells guys is so let's just pretend that there was a tight end attached right here. Now this end would be in a six. He'd still be in a three. We'd still have a two eye and a five. And this Will's your A-gap backer, the mic's away. And those should be swapped. I'm sorry. We want the mic to the tight end, obviously. And then Coach, bottom. what's your alignment for your overhangs? Do, oh, it, it, do, is it, do you have a base alignment or is it dictated by split? We're three and three base unless two is very, very remote. If two gets a really, really wide split, then we'll have to we'll expand a little bit and uh, let the safety expand as well. We, uh, we try and keep our overhangs intact as much as possible because I think that the overhangs give people problems as far as how they block them and what they do with them, and especially yeah. in the game. So uh, we try and keep them as much in the fit as possible. But if, so if two's really wide, the overhang will widen out a little bit. And if he's really tight, if he's tight to the line of scrimmage, then depending on game plan, he can play outside of that guy or head up. And he's just got to communicate with the safety. I'm in, I'm in, I'm out, I'm out. And that's kind of yeah. the stuff that we talked about. And then on the bottom here, you have a, uh, that's how we get into bear. We'll play four eyes or threes, depending on the plan. And uh, you'll see on the film, we re-ran this a good bit and got a lot of, got a mileage out of bear. Uh, all of it's pretty simple. Like I said, it's one word for us, and it's four different fronts for the other team to prepare for. That's kind of why we like it. Uh, I think it gives people fits. Uh, I think it allows you to do a lot without having to spend a lot of time on it and getting good at it. Because for us, the nose is the nose. He's played a nose before. He's played a shade before. So he's used to playing on a shoulder as well as head up. Uh, the ends can play in fives or fours. They're used to both. So it's not like we're teaching a ton of different techniques. We're just able to present it a little bit differently uh, to make it tough on the offense. So I'm going to get into some huddle stuff. Can everybody see that? You can see that, Coach Neal? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So for us, the way we call our blitzes with our, uh, our middle backers, so auto for us is our base front, nose and two fours. Bomb puts both backers in the B gap. <clears throat> Here's our bomb cross. <clears throat> we use this one a ton. 
uh, where the mic is always the first one going. Mike's always first, Will's always behind him. And uh, usually, I don't have it drawn up, but usually we want to play four eyes with this one. Let the four eyes work out. And that'll kind of widen that gap for those backers to run through. So here we go. Here's our, uh, <clears throat> here's kind of how we would call it. So for us, we would have base Mike dog right here. So Mike dog is the mic and the overhang to his side going. So all the Mike has to say, if we have Mike dog on, the Mike just has to say, hey, I'm Mike, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. So he's letting the overhang know he's the Mike. That's the side we're coming from. So he just says, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. Now the overhang knows he's going. Uh, and this is kind of getting into how we structure it and how it can be a bunch of different stuff with just changing the uh, kind of the eye candy of it. So here it is out of our base front. Here it is at a stack, which I really like it at a stack. Pretty good for us here. And it's the same thing. He just got to say, hey, I'm Mike, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. And here it is at a bear. So you can see one word changes kind of the protection of everything. Because uh, I know talking to offensive guys, 3-3 uh, three, three stack kind of messes with their rules a little bit. So it's, it's hard to prepare for everything in three days. So if we can jump into this, maybe get a free sack on third and long when they hadn't really, maybe they didn't protect through three stack particularly well, and that's good for us. Uh, and here's Bear. And here it is in Bear again. And I drew these up because we have clips of all these coming. So we will play with mug backers a good bit. Well, we'll walk them up in there, in their B gaps and do different stuff with them. So same thing here. If we have bear mug Mike dog on, now all the Mike has to say still, hey, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. And we're still coming from that side. And the Will's now just a dropper. He's your whole player now. <clears throat> so Mike stick for us, just your normal NCAA blitz. Uh, this is one that's really good at a stack. Really, really good at a stack. So that tackles long stick into the A gap. Nose is opposite A. Same thing. Mike says, hey, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. He's, Mike's got that B gap. Overhang's coming off the edge. Here it is at a stack. I really like this at a stack. <clears throat> so you can see it's the same blitz, just presented a ton of different ways. And uh, you know, talking to some people we played, that they said that was the most frustrating thing was it's the ability for us to jump in and out of this seamlessly without having to sub personnel or sub anything like that. We can just jump into it. If we're playing a big check with me team, uh, I think it's really good against that. If you come out in base, they check. Now you jump into 3-3 stack. Now that might change the rules for their play or they might change the gaps that they thought they had. Coach, do y'all stem in and out of it? Yes, we will stem. Uh, depending on uh, the check with me stuff, <clears throat> usually uh, if they check, our, our rule kind of is if they check, we check. So if right. they, we're going to check. Uh, and, you know, it, a lot of times, sometimes it hurts us, sometimes it helps us. But just one of those things where we feel like we can kind of get an advantage if we jump into something that they haven't seen yet. And then here's one that we got a ton of mileage out of. And it's crazy to think, because we're still only bringing four guys, but you'd be amazed how many times this might come scot-free through there. So this is us at a stack doing it. And then at a bear. And at a bear, guys, it's really deadly. Uh, it's hard for these guys to protect. And you can see these guys, these overhangs dropping out. But what we want in this is we want to dictate protections. So whenever these tackles see these overhangs out here, they know they kind of got to set out to them a little bit. So when they set out, now it puts the guards one-on-one -on -one with your uh, interior guys, and you're going to get a free runner here in this A-gap. And I have a couple clips of that one too. And whatever we do with Mike, we can do with Will. So like this year we had a guy who played Will for us who was a little bit better blitzer than the Mike. So we went more Will stuff than Mike. It's just all based on your personnel. 
<clears throat> and like I said, this is, it's safe because you're still only bringing four. You can still play your coverages behind it. You can still do whatever you want. You don't just have to play man. You can play two, you can play four, you can play three if you want. So it's safe for us and it gives us the ability to get a free runner and kind of dictate how they're going to protect it. Uh, most offenses only have one way to protect bear. And so I think once you figure that out, you can get into this on some third down, some second and long stuff and have a ton of success with it. And here's, here's just our base wheel twist. Uh, so that's kind of the gist of what we're going to see here. I got a bunch of film cut ups. I know you guys don't want to see a playbook. You guys want to see real football. So uh, I may, yeah, here it is. So here's kind of the film of it and how we, uh, how we execute it. So here you can see we got into our overfront. Uh, they have to the boundary. We just walked that outside backer down as a five. And now we get our mic ad here. Uh, this was one that we got a ton of mileage out of, and you can see it. All we're telling this Mike is he just fits in the open gap. He has no, we don't tell him what gap. We don't tell him anything. We just tell him you fit where you go, get where you fit. And uh, you can see it here. We get a free runner with the, with the uh, mic. This was during those COVID practices where we didn't want to uh, tackle anyone, social distancing. <clears throat> so the one thing that I didn't mention is uh, when we go stack and we're running our bomb cross stuff, it's no longer on the center. When we stack it, it gets, it becomes, the cross becomes on the guard to the side that we're crossing. So that's just kind of an automatic thing we have to put in. So now instead of crossing in, uh, <clears throat> the opposite B gaps, we're just going to cross in the same B gap on that guard and make it get a two on one on the guard. And you'll see how it works here. Where we get a free runner. We do a really bad job of keeping the quarterback in the pocket right here. We miss a tackle and get a long run, but I just wanted to put this one on there so you can see kind of how the structure of it works. So you see protection wise, this back is responsible for the mic. So the back's going to run, the back's going to run himself all the way to the mic who's going to that opposite A, and that leaves this, ex this backer free. We just do a poor job of execution right here and don't get there. But I want to put this one on there so you can see it from the end zone. Coach, coaching point for, uh, I guess it would be the, the outside backer. Is okay. he just as if you run a twist stunt with your D-line, I'm going off flash? Yes. Of the, yes. Of the mic? Yes. Correct. Okay. He's trying to uh, he's trying to pick his pocket. Same thing as any of your uh, line twist, anything like that. Right. Here's just a normal one. Just your normal B gap stunt here. That's just the base bomb one that we went to. Let's see it better from the end zone here. <clears throat> we kind of had a dude that knows this year. So uh, a lot of teams protected it with putting as many guys as they can on that guy, which left stuff like this, this bomb stunt wide open. Uh, we tell our backers, we don't want to be right now on the snap going. We kind of want to let the protection set up. So you can see right here, 44 actually does a decent job of it where he just lets the guy go, takes a couple steps, and now he's free. And you can see how uh, we're playing the, the nose in fives right now. So we're in jet. We want the tackle to set out here to our five tech. We want the tackle to set out and hope that our linebacker is a better athlete than that guard. And uh, should be, he is most of the time. And now we get a free runner. And that's just simple. I mean, that's one that we got a ton of mileage out of this year. and still being safe in our coverages. And here's just the, your base mic. For us, this is mic. And if we play, I mean, everyone runs zone and duo now where they're reading the mic. If 
we play a zone team, we want to cut the zone off as quick as possible and make that guy have a one-way go instead of a two-way go. So we'll run this if we're playing a true zone team where we can go and cut the zone off and try and beat that guard to a spot. And all it turns into, really, it turns into an old-school 4-2-5 front. Uh, the nose is gonna should be playing backside A, and now we're just creating a three tech with that mic. Creating a three tech with the mic, nose should be playing backside A. He's your shade now, and we're still playing old school rules. And we get a big hit and a tackle for loss right there on just running the mic through there. <clears throat> Here's one I didn't talk about. Uh, we call this one Mike Bluff. Bluff where the mic's going to show like he's coming and then get out and the Will's just going to take his spot. So now the Will's the extra rusher here and you'll see it good from the back view. The mic's going to act like he's coming. He's going to get out and now we get a free runner with the Will. We ran so much of this this year <clears throat> that we started to see how teams were just kind of keying on the mic. So we just went Mike Bluff, and now the mic would walk up like he's coming. The guard would look, get his eyes on him, and now we get a free runner from the backside in that same gap. And actually, 44 should be a little bit deeper, dropping right there into that slant window that they threw. But you can see how we can, you can kind of manipulate it how you want it if you know how they're going to protect it. See the nose takes here, nose takes the A gap to the back. He's going to take backside A, and those backers are responsible for the play side A gap. Point on this would be the wheel's a little too slow coming. He hesitates, hesitates, now he's there. Coach, you're at 10 minutes. Okay, awesome. Here's one, we get an auto mic, same thing. So as you can see here, <clears throat> overhang walk down on the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to have to slide their protection to the overhang. Tackle's going to set out. Guard's going to set here, and we get a free rusher with the mic. Not a sack, but we force a bad throw, and we get an interception out of it. Uh, this is one that's good. It just gets it makes the uh, it makes a high school offensive lineman think on his feet. So right now he's thinking, okay, this guy's probably going to come. I got to set out here. He's got to set out here. And now we get a free runner right there. Let's get to some other stuff here. Only got 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this is our four man stuff here. This is our over front. Our over, I'm sorry, this is even. So we're going to play twos and fives here fives and same blitz though still we call it this would be over even bomb for us or even bomb for us i think we bust this one and there we get a free shot on the qb we're wrong right here this backer should be in this b gap and he should be right there he goes they both go in the same gap and kind of asshole each other and then this side's the, uh, the good blitz side right here. We get a free runner and a hit on the quarterback. So we went, uh, how we went Mike add earlier in the presentation. Now we're going with the will. Another good example of the uh, simulated pressure stuff. The overhangs walk down. They set out. Now the will's got a free run. We get a sack out of it. So the tackle is going to set out to that overhang. That's a good look of it right there. Here's our dog stunt. So Mike dog for us. Here's the mic. Here's our overhang. He made a mic on mic call. There's a good run blitz, good blitz on second and long to get him to third and long. Here's the same blitz again. 
This was an automatic for us that game. So you, when we come into a game, we'll have automatic checks to certain formations. And uh, this was one for that game. Uh, if this was, we call this gun split. So running back here with the H back here, that was an automatic for us. <clears throat> uh, we thought that we had a decent tendency on them. So this was our automatic blitz to that formation. So here we are in uh, Bear. <clears throat> uh, we're running our smoke stunt here, which is both overhangs coming. Both overhangs coming. With both backers. And it's the same stunts no matter what. Like I said earlier, it's the same names, same everything, just different presentations. So Bear Coach, do you all have any uh... – reads on the uh, line, the offensive line that you may be, lineman you may be going to to adjust your path? Yes. So, uh, if we are running, so let's say we have a slant or something, a stunt on where we're trying to cross face of an offensive lineman or something like that. If, uh, if that offensive lineman sets out to us, we just tell our backers, you have to make it right from behind. So if let's say we're going in the uh, let's say we're going in the B gap and that offensive guard sets way out there and that tackle has to sit in the B gap, the backer just reads it from behind and now he fits in that A gap. Sign coach. Yes, sir. Here we go. This is one where we're actually blitzing the A gap this time. This is, so A gap for us is attack. And this is out of bear again. You'll see we kind of get an extra rusher with 42 there, unblocked coming through. A big fourth down stop for us late in the game. Let's see here. Quick, quick question on that, Coach, now um, out of that bear front. Yes, sir. We covered you in on that back end. Uh, we play, it depends on uh, game plan. Dwight, it's uh, either going to be four we're going to try and stay with our base rules as much as we can, play cover four, or we'll play some form of two, or usually ends up being cover zero a lot of the times as well. I got you, yeah, because like I said, I know most of the time we play cover zero out of that, they're also two. Yeah. It'll be a four or zero. Let me refresh this real quick. I added some clips to this one, Neil, so bear with me real quick. No problem. We got uh, four and a half minutes left. Okay, cool. So here's some of the edge stuff. <clears throat> so now this is the lion for us right here. So it's uh, going to be the guy on the left coming. And we get a free runner and a big hit on the quarterback. So this is, this is kind of like, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen the, uh, the different, I think people call them now creepers and creeper pressures and all that stuff where we're going to slant the front, slant the front and bring one overhang guy. And it's still only rushing four, but slanting the front, we're trying to eat up two blockers with one. And we do a good job of that and hit the, uh, hit the RPO before they can throw it. Here it is again. Uh, this is what for us, we call this one Brady. Same thing, we're gonna slant the front to the left and then that overhang is coming here. He does a bad job of coming, but we end up getting a sack out of it, <clears throat> a sack and a fumble. So you can see here, uh, this tackle, he's trying to work inside here to take two, two of the offensive linemen. And we get there, do a good job of it and get a sack on the quarterback. Let me flip through this real quick. Okay, here we go. This is uh, kind of the first year we put it in. This was my last year at Como. Uh, this is the bear with the twist. <clears throat> and you can see how uh, pretty legal if you execute it right. So right now we have a three tech, two three techs, and a tech here should be a five, but he's wrong. And we get a free runner there with uh with the with the mic. Bad throw. 
and we're good. Coach, I, I hate to cut you off. We're about uh, two minutes, and we, we're welcome. We can always uh, do a part two of this. If we, if anybody has any questions or wants to email Coach, um, we can definitely line something up. I had a, I had a message a while ago about a guy that uh, had a dentist appointment, so he wants to know if we can film it. And all of our uh, little mini clinics that we do are recorded, and we put them on the Speed Kills uh, football YouTube channel. So go check that out, subscribe to it, so anything – Anytime you would miss it uh, for any reason, uh, we can always, you know, you can always pull it up on that. Um, I want to thank Coach Mouton for joining us. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, I look forward to doing some more things. And we have some more defensive guys coming up in the future. Uh, we have a couple college guys. One of them, uh, this, this coming up week, I believe, just added. And we'll be doing uh, DB drills, um, footwork block destruction and tackling drills. Um, he's going to, he's going to do a presentation on that. And uh, we also have uh, about four or five other guys we're trying to set dates on right now that have committed. So we're really doing uh, some really good things and we just, we appreciate all y'all joining. It's great that uh, to be able to have a, you know, a, a stage where we can all get together and uh, actually talk football with the COVID era and everything. Uh, clinics are kind of out the window. So I, I'm, I'm really enjoying the hell out of this, being able to talk football three or four times a week. Um, so uh, go to the, our Facebook, like it, um, Twitter, um, YouTube. Uh, we're trying to just get all the information out there we can and just really, you know, create a, a good football culture for everyone to uh, be able to get together and talk some football. So, Coach Mouton, again, I appreciate it. Thank you all for Absolutely. joining in. Um, and if you know anyone that missed this and want to see it, we'll be putting it on the uh, YouTube channel. So go subscribe. Thanks, awesome. guys. Appreciate it, Neil. Uh-huh.